and I think that we can get started. Um, so my name is Hannah Corey. I'm the program coordinator for the Early Childhood Leadership Academy at Erickson. So I'll be um, helping to moderate this breakout room. We have two wonderful educators with us today who will give some presentations. And then we'll have about 15 minutes or so um, at the end for Q&A. So if you can please hold your questions until both educators have had a chance to present. So we have with us this, uh, this evening, we have Kim Engelman and uh, Niambi Muhammad. So we're gonna get started with Kim. Kim is from Alton Community Unit School District number 11 in Madison County. And um, she has been teaching in early childhood for 30 years and has been with her current school for 27 years. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on those numbers, but I'm gonna go ahead and share her presentation. Would help if I had it, oh, there we go. All right, I'm going to share here. All right, can everybody let's get that in there? Can everybody see presentation ready to go? All right, I'll turn it over to you, Kim. Hi, welcome. Yes, my name is Kim Engelman, and I'm coming to you live from Alton, Illinois, from my classroom, actually. I just thought it would be easier than dragging my stuff home. So um, I uh, teach in Alton, which is right outside of St. Louis, for anyone who is wondering. But yes, I've been teaching for 30 years, 27 years in my district, but three years at a laboratory school prior to that. I am currently in a pre-K classroom with three to five-year-olds. Um, it's usually two half-day classes, uh, Monday through Friday. Usually I have 20 in each class or right about there. Right now we are hybrid. Um, I have 15 students. Um, some are meeting Monday, Wednesday, some Tuesday, Thursday. Then I have some that are fully remote. Um, on Friday, we're all fully remote. So we started the year fully remote. Um, we were hybrid for about four weeks and then back to remote around Thanksgiving and then back to remote in January. So we are currently hybrid right now. So um, it, it's been back and forth, back and forth, which is kind of exhausting. And I, I know you, you all are aware of how much mental this takes. <laughs> so, um, so I will just jump right in since we're on a, a timeline here. So, I just wanted to talk about, um, next slide, that, um, how I approached um, virtual learning with young children and how I quickly came to the realization that this was my opportunity to really show families what developmentally appropriate hands-on activities look like for young children, just utilizing what's in their environment and through their everyday experiences. Um, how many times have you had parents say to you, like in a parent-teacher conference or something, that I've tried flashcards or workbooks and they're just not interested? Well, we, you know, inside we're all cringing, right? <laughs> and we tried to explain, you know, what is developmentally appropriate and how everything in their environment, um, it really you can work on those foundational skills, right? So I sat down and I started gathering my favorite children's literature, began brainstorming extension activities and the whole thing, and uh, realized that, that there's so many things that you can do with books, right? And we're always doing that. We're always introducing books and concepts through books and then all the extension activities you could do with that. So next slide. Um, as I prepared for this workshop, um, my initial thought was to share with you some of my favorite books and then the extension activities that I've done virtually. Then I realized that the activities I wanted to share could really be modified um, to any foundational skills that you're working on. Uh, so this is just a few of my favorite books that I put on here. And the IELDS is Illinois Early Learning Development Standards for people who are not from Illinois. <laughs> um, and so I just chose some from the language arts and math. Um, demonstrate an emerging understanding of the alphabet, the numbers, number names and numerals, and then the one on shapes. I did not put benchmarks on here because that's something you need to decide for your children what benchmarks you want to work on underneath those standards. So you might be familiar with some of these books, maybe not, I'm not sure, but I just brought some Alphabet Under Construction, wonderful book um, to go through about building um, different letters. And I'm going to go through all my activities um, that can be used with all these books. 
The Three Bears ABC is a wonderful book because um, not only does it um, cover letters, but it also talks about alliteration. So you can get a lot from this letter sounds, alliteration. So this is a wonderful, wonderful book if you've never seen it before. Um, then for numbers, 10 black dots is a classic um, that is just wonderful to use to introduce numbers and one to 10 and doing the um, numbers to quantity, identifying numbers. You can do so much with this and extension activities that you can do with that. Um, chicken, chicken, one, two, three. Of course, chicken, chicken, boom, boom is classic. You know, and this is an extension of that. And this is a wonderful book too because the numbers even go higher. And especially my kids that are going to kindergarten um, are working on those higher numbers. And of course, all of them like to see the number 100 in there and get to that number. So that's a wonderful book to share. Um, mouse shapes. Um, this is another one, and Ellen Stowalsh Walsh has a whole series of these, but this is another way um, introducing shapes and all the extension activities that you could do with um, the shapes that they share with you in this book. And then the shape of things. This is a wonderful book to really get them to think about uh, shapes that are in their environment. Um, and that's what we want them to do, right, um, when we do that. So, go on to the next slide. Thanks. So the rest of my presentation are just activities that I wanted to share with you that you can extend the literature that you use. Keep in mind that all these activities can be modified to cover multiple benchmarks, uh, depending on what your focus is. Um, you can also do these, you know, it can be during circle time, small groups, or individually. Um, but all of these I have done virtually, and they have worked well, because um, it really gets them to think about their environment and using what materials they have in their environment. We did, um, at the beginning of the year, send home a whole packet with our kids with just basic supplies. So with like scissors, markers, crayons, all the basic supplies. Tried to just send home some activities, but you know, we really just wanted to show the families, you know, this was my opportunity to be in their homes and show them, oh, what you can use just right there in their home. Um, so I'm just going to go through these activities that I've listed. Um, the first one is scavenger hunts. And I saw there was a whole session on nothing but scavenger hunts. <laughs> and so that's wonderful. And it, it, they are so much fun. And they have been just really a neat activity that the kids enjoy because it gets them up and moving, right? And finding things in their environment. So I just gave examples, some examples after each one of these, but you could fit them to anything that you're working on. So scavenger hunts, find something that is round, find something that begins with letter B. Uh, sometimes I would count to 10 and give them that time to go do it. Sometimes I would just play music. When the music stops, they need to be back. Uh, sometimes I would do a timer. Um, you can put up a visual timer on your screen and they know they have to be back in that amount of time. So um, they're just so much fun. Um, I have to give you an example. Last week, uh, we were talking about feelings and um, we did a whole thing about being happy. And so I told, I ended the session with go find something that makes you happy. And one of my kids brought back his baby sister. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my sister and I try not to be teary eyed, but it was the sweetest thing because he was so sincere. He brought, you know, she makes me happy and he's holding his baby sister. So, I mean, you just don't get that kind of experience, um, you know, in the classroom in that respect, you know, so that was a really neat experience. As far as uh, show and tell, that's usually something I do before class. I would tell them, you know, bring to class um, something that is square shape or bring four of something. Next week, they're supposed to bring 10 of something. And so then we will in small group talk about what they brought. And so you're encouraging them to just find something in their home. It might be 10 pennies or 10 Q-tips or whatever they have, but it's showing the parent you can count anything, right? So, um, so that's wonderful. Observational drawings, um, that is just something wherever they might be sitting, whatever room they're sitting in, find something for them to draw. I might give them a specific room. Um, go to your kitchen. What shape is your refrigerator? Oh, it has two long sides, two short sides. It's a rectangle. Let's draw it. I did a study on trees, and so that was great. We looked out the window. We were looking at the trees in our yard. What kind of trees do you have? And things like that. So just doing observational drawings. Write what you see. Um, that is just walk around your house literally and copy letters or numbers. What letters and numbers can you find on like food boxes, junk mail, store ads, 
anything you have around your house. Um, I did give all my kids a clipboard and they also got a dry erase board. And so I encouraged them, you know, just find whatever you can to write about um, that's in your house that you can find. So building and creating with home materials, um, that, that's an easy one, just find spoons, forks. And I'll tell them, go to the kitchen and go get six spoons and then we'll make shapes with them or letters or numbers, whatever, or we're counting them. You can do it more advanced. Um, you might tell them, let's see if we can create a 3D shape. Can we make a cone or can we make a cube out of what we have? So working on that or just telling them make a shape with three sides. So they would have to know, oh, that's a triangle. So depending on the level of your children, um, getting them to uh, think about those different things. So, all right, next slide. Uh, the next one I put was homemade writing trays, and I use a lot of cookie trays, so I would just, or cookie sheets, so I tell the parents, you know, a thin layer of either salt or sand, and the kids just use their finger. They can use their finger, they can use the end of a, an eraser, whatever they have to draw or write in it, shake it a little bit, and then it disappears. So um, cookie sheets are wonderful. Also for magnets, I do a lot of magnet things on cookie sheets, so which is great to hold it up to the screen too um, for them to see. Of course, snack um, is also wonderful. I'll tell my friends, bring um, a snack that you'll be able to count or put into shapes or letters, so cereal or crackers or something like that. Um, of course, we all know that food is a great motivator, right? <laughs> so, um, and they love to, it, it gets their, keeps their attention too. So I let my kids eat through their class, you know, whatever they're eating as long as they're paying attention, but we try to utilize that snack too. What snack do you have today? Um, and of course that goes on to great discussions too <laughs> about that, so. Uh, of course, homemade Play-Doh. I send a recipe home to my parents. Um, I've also made the Play-Doh and send it home to them. I'm not a bought Play-Doh person. I like the homemade Play-Doh. So um, definitely you can make shapes, letters, numbers, um, but that is definitely some that we, you know, we do quite a bit of is the Play-Doh. And of course you're working on those fine motor skills um, with that. Homemade sensory bin. Um, I just try to encourage the parents, any kind of small container you have, it could be a dish pan or small little rubber made, um, just put cotton balls in there or shredded paper or plastic lids, whatever you have. And then um, you can hide things in there, hide letters or numbers or shapes or something that they can dig for and find. They just love to do that. So see what you can find in your sensory bin. Look at your clothes. I just did a study on clothing. Well, we're kind of ending it here soon. Um, but just looking at their clothes, they have all their clothes at home. Um, can you find a shirt that has letters on it? Can you find a shirt that has numbers on it or a jacket or anything like that? Uh, we also looked at their tags. Look at your clothes. There's tags in there. What do you see on there? Oh, there's a S for small. Um, so just looking at the tags in their clothes and of course counting buttons, snaps, pockets, you know, all the things that they have on their clothing. So clothing was a great uh, study to do virtually because they have it all at home. They, you know, we practice zipping. We, we compared our parents' clothes to our clothes and different sizes. And so the clothing study was, was really kind of fun to do. This next one, uh, wiggle worm. Um, it's just, and I just threw this together literally right before. You can put anything in a container. It could be ladders, numbers, shapes. Then you have some papers that have um, worms on it. And, you know, we know kids don't really care what it looks like, right? <laughs> you tell them it's a worm. Um, so you pull it out, whatever it is, we all identify it. If I pull out the worm, we all yell, wiggle worm, and we all get to wiggle. So that one's a lot of fun to do. And that's a take on, um, if you're familiar with creative curriculum, they have jumping jelly bean, if you're familiar with that, which is very similar. Um, but uh, my kids love to do wiggle worm and you can do any concept um, with that too. Very easy to make. All right, next slide. Thank you. Um, music, uh, this is kind of a take on the scavenger hunt. Choose a type of music to play, then stop it periodically, and then they have to do something. Sometimes they might have to draw something or write something or go find something specific. Um, so it's just a little take on the scavenger hunt, just adding music. It's another level on the scavenger hunt. 
uh, but doing it with music. All right. Um, the next one is mystery bag. Um, I just have a little bag that says mystery bag and they know when this comes out, I'm gonna describe something and they have to figure out what's inside of it. Um, you can use any kind of container that they can't see, uh, but just give clues like I have a shape in my bag. It has two long sides, two short sides. What is that? And so they have to figure out, oh, it's a rectangle. So um, great way to introduce concepts too. All right. Uh, what's missing? So um, I usually just place several things um, on a cookie sheet and show it to them. And then I will take it away, take something off the tray and they have to figure out what's missing. So that's a fun game. They all love to do that one. Um, turn taking, um, teaching them how to do that mute and unmute button. <laughs> So, um, so that one's a lot of fun. Guess how many? Um, that I just use a, con a clear container. Right now they have buttons in there because we've been doing clothing. Um, using, you know, teaching that word about estimation and can you guess how many are in there? So, um, and we talk about that. And then, you know, counting the items, you can write the numeral, you can make a graph, record their results and showing them how to do that. And the last one is a homemade game. Um, and I literally drew this just a little while ago, but I encourage my kids to make homemade games at home. Um, they can use stickers, bingo daubers, um, draw their own dots, you know, just start it. And they can add whatever they want. It can be letters, shapes, roll a dice. Either I can roll a dice and they all move and then say what they landed on, um, or they can do it at home. And then I've had families tell me, we played their game last night, it was a lot of fun. And so the kids are excited that they made their own game. Um, so just making path games on their own, um, which is really easy to do at home too, so. All right, next slide. So uh, this is just kind of my final thoughts um, on diversity and ELL students. This is a perfect time to involve the families. They are right there. So take advantage of having the families in their home environment to share their culture and native language, um, especially with the clothing. If you have families you know, um, that are from different cultures and can share their clothing and tell you about it. Um, we uh, concentrate a lot on, we are all different but we are the same. So we talk a lot about that. And um, what a wonderful way, virtually, they're in their home. So we talk a lot about, oh, well, you live here and you live there and I live here. And you know, we talk about that and they bring their favorite foods. Oh, I see you like this food. I like this food. So um, different things like that. Two books that I did wanna share with you two on diversity that I just love. And I forgot to put it on my slides, I apologize. We are all like, we are all different. This is an old, old book from Scholastic, been around forever. Um, and it was a kindergarten class years ago. I think these kids are like 35 now or something. <laughs> um, but it is a wonderful book to talk about. We are all like, we are all different. And that is the um, concept that we really work on when talking about diversity. And this is another one from Scholastic. And this was created by a preschool classroom years ago too. The Land of Many Colors is another great one um, to work on that too. All right. So my last statement, using children's literature is a wonderful way to introduce foundational skills. And my hope is that I was able to share some developmentally appropriate hands-on experiences that you will be able to use as a way to enhance your own virtual teaching. So that is my whole presentation. All right. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, we will get to questions and comments and all that um, after we have our next speaker present. So I'd like to introduce Nyambi, Nyam right? Muhammad? Nyambi. Yeah, Muhammad, thank you. Um, she's with Chicago Public School. She's been teaching for in early childhood for 20 years and has been at her current school for two years. Um, so take it away, Nyambi. Yes, so um, I am also, oh, can everyone see me okay? I think there's somebody who's not muted. There you go. Thank you. Um, so I am, I'm from St. Louis, so I've been here for over, uh, let's see, 25 years, and uh, homeschooled for most of those years, and like she said, in the classroom um, in Chicago Public Schools, actually James Newton Thorpe on the south side of Chicago, uh, south side of Chicago. So when we started this year, most of you know it, well, CPS, we started at home, fully virtual, fully remote. And um, that hour that we had with our students that was synchronous, we had to basically 
um, you know, I wanted to make it power punched. Um, I, I think that what Kim shared, uh, you know, shows that great minds think and perform alike. Most of those activities we did. And so one of the things that we had in our virtual sessions were finger plays. So before we actually got into um, this, the presentation that I'm going to share, is we the children all know the finger play, you know, way up high in the apple tree. And I kind of did my own spin on it. So for me, what I wanted to share with you tonight that you could take away is an actual activity that I've done that can be extended in so many ways. And I'm absolutely going to put it down, you know, um, in paper and writing for afterwards. Um, but I, we use in the early childhood, um, well, in pre-K in Chicago public schools, we use creative curriculum, which is um, also, you know, teaching strategies gold. So I have a lot of references to those standards, which probably line up with the Illinois, um, well, they do line up with the Illinois standards. So um, basically, um, my act presentation, like I said, is actually an activity. So the, we, we were basically, uh, and it happened in the beginning of the year because it will touch those um, standards that we do uh, in ages three to four. So I'm gonna show you the Google slide that I, pre that I created uh, and I'll kind of walk with you through the mindset of what I was trying to do when I shared this with my children because I'm a very visual and musical person singing so the rhymes, this is what I wanted to um, show is how you can use rhyme with literacy and math uh, in your virtual learning with a Google slide. The Google slides are really cool and the students love it and it's very visual for them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. I don't see, I thought I had it. Well, I might need your help, Hannah. <laughs> Let me see. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, here it is. Okay, wait a minute. I'm gonna go. I'm getting it together. Perfect. I am getting it together. <laughs> now, tell me, is everybody seeing what I'm seeing? Okay, great. So we were just saying, like, you know, that's the one thing about this remote uh, teaching. Anything that can happen will happen. And at the end of the day, if I do my way up high in the apple tree, five red apples, like the students, so you got to always have something in your bag. And if we're talking about that, then I have to go to just being, you know, animated and talking about it. And like she said, using your numbers and show me five. So first I would show them, we got the five red apples on the apple tree. Now I've also made um, this tree for them to take home that, that, I, that they would have at home with little apples to take on and put off. So they're very engaged and captivated just by the fact that they are familiar with this activity. So I show that to them and I say five red apples on the apple tree. And we go to the next one and I ask them, what do you see? Now, when I say, what do you see? This uh, standard is the language standard 8A, okay? And teaching strategies gold. And basically it's just saying that these children are able to respond appropriately to specific vocabulary and simple statements, questions, and stories. Like, what do you see? Okay, and then they'll tell me what, you know, tree, right? And I'll say, yes, look at what's highlighted. So now in this virtual world, I've shown them what's highlighted so that they can see what I'm talking about. Let's spell tree. Oh, let's see. What do we do when we spell? So then I, they were like, we use letters. Okay, let's spell it. T-R-E-E, -E, that spells tree. So already I'm getting into another standard with literacy. So the more now, another thing I want to tell you is this presentation, I make it available for asynchronous learning as well. So they're able to watch it. Like I've made it a movie or a video. So once again, the more familiar they are with it, the more engaged they are with the presentation. So they're like, oh, it's oh, it's a tree. I'm like, right. And even if they've never seen it, it still is good to see, you know, what their reaction is and what, what jogs their memory. 
So we're talking about letter identification. And then I'll ask them, great, now what do you see on the tree? So once again, this is all language, right? And we're all in early childhood, diverse, you know, dual language learners. We're learning English, right? We're learning uh, language, English is, you know, so it's, this is, that's being a dual language learner, you know, and also other languages that we're learning like the language of math and all those other cool things. So they'll say, maybe they'll say, green or leaves or whatever they say. And then hopefully as I keep on asking questions, someone will say nothing, oh, nothing. Do you know what we use when we say nothing? What number, do you see a number? That's zero. So once again, I'm bringing in math, you know, um, bringing in the standard where they're able to uh, connect numerals. This is 20C, connect numerals and their quantities. So anybody who teaches creative curriculum at TSG, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, she's broken down all the specific little, um, you know, standards. And that stuff is like gold for teachers, for teaching strategies gold. So then I will go again to, you know, what do we see on the tree? Back to that language, right? And, you know, and they say, you know, zero what, right? And they, hopefully somebody's going to say, um, you know, what, you know, what can be on a tree? We could talk about pears, but what's going to be on this tree? And hopefully somebody will say apples, right? We'll say, yes, apples, red, R-E-D spells red, and then apples, A-P-P-L-E-S, apples. So I do that purposely when I highlight each letter and then the word, because I want to keep them looking at the screen, looking around the screen, because one thing I know I'm competing with is all the screen other screen time that they have. So Mrs. Muhammad is going to come with some fantastic screen time that's useful and that they're doing. And I will even have me doing the apple tree because I can present the whole screen and they'll see me. That's you, Miss Muhammad, it's two of you. And that, like a, anything that I'm gonna have to captivate them. So then we go on and say, yeah, zero apples. Now I'll ask them, how many, what do you see now? And they'll say, it's an apple. How many apples do you see? So now we get into the math, quantifying, right? Being able to um, actually count, count up to 10. And also they're able to quantify, this is in the green and blue strip where they're recognizing and naming the names of a number of items in a small set up to five instantly. And most of them are really able to say one, one apple, right? And I'll say, well, let's count. So then you'll see one, right? So I put these little dots because they can point with their fingers and I want them to do that. But I also visually want them to see what we're counting. And I've also highlighted the one so that they can see that that's what we're talking about, one. And then I say, yes, one red apple, right? And then we go to the next one. And the same thing, you get the idea of what we're doing. So now, once again, we're doing the one, let's count, one, two, and we see the two. So now the reason why the, the number comes up on the last thing that's counted, because that's also going into a standard where they can recognize that the final number said represents how many of something, right? So the biggest thing too that we're doing now, and I forgot to explain to them, you know, the objectives, like we're counting. We're gonna count to five, we're gonna count forward, and we're gonna count backwards. And we're gonna see some words and learn some letters and things like that. So they'll know all the cool things that we're gonna be doing. And then I'll say, yes, there's two, two red apples. And then the same thing, we'll see three apples that'll come up and they'll get to, and I, and I don't say anything. I really just try to let them figure out the pattern of how this is going to go. And they get the pattern, one more. And when we finally get to it, so they're getting one more. So, we, oh, another one. So what, how many do we have now? And they'll be like three. Of course, we say, let's count. So there we go right? And we just keep on going and there we are, right? So we're just keep on counting. And I want to get you now here, we have the last one, right? Five red apples. Now this star, 
this star is not just for them, but it's for me. Because you know, when you make enough Google Slides, you can get lost. So this star is a signal for me that we're ready to start this rhyme. And the students are ready. And I'm like, OK, let's get ready to say the rhyme. Say it with me. And now they're like way up high in the apple tree. Five, show me five. Five red apples looking good to me. I shook that tree just as hard as I could. And down came up. Oh, Look, oh, looking good to me. Now, see, I forgot myself. We say looking good. Okay, looking good to me. So I'm showing them these words. And I say, oh, look at that. It looks yummy, right? Like those red apples are so yummy. Looking good to me. And so we see these words and we see left to right. So all of these things I'm showing them in the Google slide with the movement, with the highlighting. And now we get to see something cool and they love this because everybody knows Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. We've, we've read this. And so now we have these apples that are moving down the tree when we shake it. So now they get to see, wow, one came down, how many's left? Now this is just a rhyme. So now we're gonna switch and give them some more vocabulary and really jump into this math. Cause look at this, we have five apples and now five red apples, right? So, and now we shook that tree, what happened? One fell down, one went away and the X shows us that one went away. So now we're showing them, um, you know, we have minus, once went away, we talk about subtraction and we'll even say that. Oh, we're taking away one minus subtracting minus one. And then here's the equal sign. Equal tells us now how many, right? This question mark tells us how many are left. Well, how do we find out? Let's count. And once again, we're doing that one-to-one -one as we do one object. And that's also counting. That is mathematics 20A when we count. So then we go one, two, three, four, right? And once again, they see the four is the final number. And we just keep on going, do the same thing, looking good to me. And it's the repetition of it. It's the, vi the vibrant colors, the apples, and all this cool stuff. It just keeps on going. You're counting, looking good to me. And it's keep the same concept. You all get it. But the students, they love it and they're having a good time and I'm having a good time. And also when we get to the end, I'm just gonna get ahead and we see everything. And now when we get to the end, we see zero again. And now we're gonna count backward from five to zero where they see it again, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And then we have that. So basically, I'm going to stop sharing because I can actually tell you if you have any questions, how you can, how you can extend this um, to go beyond the three to four, the three, the three year olds, you know, where you're starting something very basic and you can get more extensive. You can have six to 10 apples on the tree. Um, the more numbers you can have the apple still down on the ground where they're also having, um, where they're looking at different sets. Um, this is also going into an extension where you're doing 20B quantifying with math. So basically, um, that's my presentation. And if you have any other questions, I can put some things together of how you can extend it and where you find the at all of the standards. And thank you so much for allowing me to share. Peaceful greetings. Thank you so, so much. So now we'll uh, open up to Q&A. Um, we did have one question in the chat. I think this was directed to Kim, but I'm sure either one can answer. What platform do you use to teach on? Um, I teach through Zoom. Um, so, okay, we, um, and, and we teach, um, it's in Chicago Public Schools, um, we teach through Google Meet. And um, yeah, Google Meet. There was another question. I want to know how you add the highlights and have the apples uh, move down. Okay, so I add the highlights. That's all in Google Slides. 
And it is pretty tedious, but the cool thing about Google Slides, it allows you to do a, cop, a lot of copying and pasting. So you don't, it just takes a little time. Uh, I'm, it looks animated because each screen I make, I just have the apple and I, I copy that app, I copy that slide, then I move the apple a little bit, copy that slide again, move the apple a little bit. And I do the same thing when I do the vowel tree. I made one called the vowel tree. And the, the more animated it is, they just like it. They just follow it because it's moving. So it's not really a hard process. If you want to, you can email me and I can walk you through it with a um, screen share. All right, we have, are there times when you have everyone unmute to answer at the same time or call out? <laughs> you want me to go first? Um, yeah, my my kids, they learned how to do the space bar. And so they do, they raise their hand and I'll call on them. Sometimes I will have them all unmuted, especially if we're in small groups. Um, I have them all unmuted so we can have just natural conversation and try to get them to talk to each other also. So, so I have them all muted and there are some cool things about the Zoom platform. <laughs> that we don't have in Google Meet. But anyway, <laughs> so um, it would be awesome if they could just press a space bar, but they can learn and they do learn. But some reason, my students, I don't know. So we pretty much have it open and everybody talks and we just learn how to share the space. So we just kind of, you know, kind of check each other. We stop and we just listen. And but they love hearing the chorus when everybody's shouting out, but then we learn how to bring it back together. So just like Kim said. All right. How do you make the small groups? Um, I do breakout rooms like we're in. So I have an assistant. So I will put half my kids in a breakout room with her. Sometimes they're working on different skill depending on what we're working on or a different level. Um, so I do use that in Zoom. And how do I make the game board? Um, the one that they made, they make on their own. Um, I just encourage them. They can, this is just a marker just draw their own dots, um, or you can use stickers, or they can do bingo dabbers. And I just show them how to make a path game. Um, and it, you know, usually there's a focus. All right, let's, we do, we did the letters of our name. So, I, you know, they put several dots, wrote like the first letter, and then we rolled dice and went through and they can name the letters in their name. All right, anybody have any other questions? We have about 10 minutes or about eight minutes left until we can uh, go back to the main room. Or anything else um, our two presenters would like to share? <laughs> I just wanted to share. I, I, I felt like, I don't know if I was actually rushing or not, but um, I know for me as a teacher, I'm very visual. And so I was trying to just take you through the slide as a student to see how that visually feels to them. And um, I also made, um, I had a felt board with the apple tree. So I did that with them. And so um, when you actually get to a point where you learn how to use Google Slides, cause now I don't know if you can believe this or not, but <laughs> I started out not knowing anything about Google Slides this year, nothing. And the more I got into it, because my students for Google Meet, it's not like Zoom. Um, if they don't know how to pin the screen or something like that, that's why the Google Slides worked so much for me because I was able to present, put it in present mode. And then they were able to actually see um, in a, in a, on, you know, on a bigger screen on their screen, what was going on. So that was actually, um, that was actually something that was very helpful for them. So that's why I got into Google Slides so much because it just, you know, everything, like I've done read alouds like that. I've presented stuff that I've used in Google Slides and then did a screencastify movie. But, you know, even those things that, um, you know, Kim shared, I can absolutely see like doing that, you know, videotaping myself doing it and making it something available, even asynchronous learning. So when we come back, they're actually um, 
familiar with it and you know for the other students so, so I can see it working both ways with asynchronous and um, synchronous. We have another question in the chat. Have you done anything with having the kids help to retell the stories? And I see, and how do you do read alouds? I've done read alouds many different ways. I literally have held up the book and read it. I do have a document camera. Um, I've read books that way. YouTube, bring up the stories and do it that way. As far as retelling, um, I also do teaching strategies and creative curriculum. So creative curriculum has you redo stories many times. Um, so, but you can do it lots of different ways, right? You can do it a flan board, you can come out with your own pieces, you know. Um, and by the time you get to that third or fourth time, right? Um, they're, they're helping you retell stories um, oftentimes. So there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, you know, act it out. <laughs> even on the screen we've even tried to do some of that so get as creative as you can it's hard <laughs> i have also done it um all those ways too like kim said um i have done it where i you know i read the book because they see me and i see this uh the book but i'm really also big too on that whole pre present mode so i've even done loom i've done screencastify as well but i've done loom for educators and it, it was free for educators and so I like how Loom would have um, a circle of you, you know, right in on the screen. So, you know, I would like be there on the screen while they're looking at it. And, you know, those kind of visual things, I, I just like appealing to those things as well for that little hour, because um, we only have like an hour. And so, um, but I've absolutely just used the book as well and just put like I've, I've also used the uh, document camera and all that um yeah so I've also done that all right how about read aloud using google zoom allows you to include yourself but not google that's a good question I don't know I guess <laughs> Done it in google meet um, where you can actually oh. go and do a google you can do a google meet where you just record, I did one before like that. I've done uh, Abi Yo Yo and I did like an actual read aloud, not just where I read the story, you know, cause you can just read aloud the story, but I've actually done it where, you know, how these shows are, you be like asking questions, like, what do you think this is? And you're like waiting for a pause or a response and the, yeah, you know, I've done that. And then they're able to watch it, you know, um, where they're kind of like, um, you know, I'm asking questions that make them think. And I'll say, oh, look at that, look at this, you know? So I pre-record me doing an actual read aloud, you know, where I'm asking the questions, where I'm talking about the vocabulary. And then, you know, and like I said, I'm, I'm totally with you, Kim, but I know like my people, when they're looking at that screen and I'm sharing it and they're not, and I'm like, look, hey, Miss Muhammad over here. <laughs> and so, but when I, when, I pre, when I put anything in present mode, immediately they're like, you know, so, so I just like, dang, I gotta, I gotta videotape myself reading it and asking the questions and then just pausing it and talking about it in the background, but it works. <laughs> So absolutely, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> okay, another question. Did you pre-record using Loom or Screen Testify? I have done. Okay, three more. I have done um, both of them. Um, screen Castify is up to five minutes. Uh, Loom, you can have more time. So when I do those read alouds, they take about maybe 19 minutes. But my students, when they're watching them, they really like it because I'm animated and I show the stuff and the pictures. But at the same time, um, I just, I just, I just like uh, Loom is a little different because you can't see the whole screen when you do the whole thing when you're doing it. But since I figured out the parameters, I've done things like that too. And Loom is free for educators. Absolutely. It's free. Now, I don't know if what, but they made it free, maybe because of the pandemic, but it's free. And you can do as long as you want. And I make recordings on Zoom for my kids that are remote. So I have kids in the classroom and I have the kids that are home remote. So I make a daily video and I do my read aloud many different ways, document camera, holding it up, videos, whatever. But um, I just use Zoom and it records on the cloud. And then I can send it out to my kids. And we also use Google Classroom. So I send it to Google Classroom. We have a question. What is your wear a mask song? 
<laughs> Somebody asking me? Okay. You I say, say in this behind me? Oh, her man's song. I was like, who is talking about that? Okay, you ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> This is the way we wear our masks, wear our masks, wear our masks. This is the way we wear our masks to stay safe and healthy. 